Husband and wife team Naomi Eisenberger and Matthew Lieberman have been finding out what goes on in our brains when we get rejected. We wanted to see if the brain responds in the same way to being rejected that it does when people are actually being physically hurt. I'm going to help them run an experiment to find out if there is a connection between pain and rejection. First of all, we need to find out which area of the brain is activated by physical pain. And guess who's volunteered to be the guinea pig? OK, Matt, what's your torture device? This might be thought of as a modern-day thumb screw. So you can stick your finger right in there. there like that. So the more we screw this up, the more it's going to cause you pain. Now that's pain. <laughs> Matthew is now going to torture me in the scanner. I have to tell you that your brain is huge. It's taking up the entire field of view on our screen. Thank you very much. <laughs> Matthew's going to rack up the pain in short bursts on Naomi's signal. As he tightens the screw another notch, it feels like my finger's about to break. And sure enough, a specific region of my brain is being activated. This region acts like an alarm system when we're in pain. It tells us that something is wrong and that we need help to fix it. All right, John, how was that? Yes. Very unpleasant. Very unpleasant. Chandler, Mary and Geraldine are also having a brain scan, but this time the scientists aren't inflicting physical pain. So once we've got um, the three of you placed in the MRI machines, we're going to ask you to take part in a very simple computer game called Cyberball. And you'll be pressing a computer keyboard to pass a ball using either a left or a right direction key. Simple as that. They're going to play the computer game in the scanner, but there's something I'm keeping from them. Our three recruits think they're playing against each other, but in reality, they're playing against a computer program that's been specially designed to make them feel rejected. The hand represents the person in the scanner, in this case, Mary. She thinks she's throwing the ball to Chandler and Geraldine, but in fact, they're all playing against a computer. The computer includes Mary in the game for the first seven throws, but after that, stops passing her the ball. Mary thinks that Chandler and Geraldine are deliberately leaving her out. All right, Mary, how was that? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> okay, that I'm part of an experiment, and this is supposed to teach me something. But really, I, how I feel is pissed off. Geraldine had a similar reaction. I felt a little lost because we had all gone into this on the same level. And, and here they were developing their own thing, and I was just left aside. I thought, OK, uh, this is a joke, or they've got something against me, or I'm throwing too hard, or uh, they don't like the way I play. So how will their brain scans compare with mine? Exactly the same area of their brains was activated by the rejection game as mine was during physical pain. So it's not surprising that physical and emotional pain feel the same. But what about Chandler? What went on in his brain? Absolutely nothing. Laid-back Chandler didn't feel a thing. It wasn't like, you know, there's money in the line or, you know, your crew's at stake or something like that. I mean, just playing a ball game, so I don't think I really gave it too, too much weight. We see that there are connections between certain personality traits and how sensitive people are to both physical pain and to social rejection. So people who tend to be more neurotic or anxious are more sensitive to physical pain and they're also more easily distressed by rejection. And extroverts are less sensitive to physical pain and also seem to be less distressed by social rejection.